Last December, hundreds of flights from a local budget airline was either delayed or canceled, causing many of its irate passengers stranded in the airport. Ni tubig, pagkain, walang binibigay sila doon sa loob. Kaya nagwawala yung mga tao. Basta nila nila pinalabas ngayon. Wala na kami magawa. Nandiyan na kami sa labas ngayon. Pinapipila for rescheduling. The airline pointed air traffic congestion and the shortage of check-in personnel as the causes of these delays. However, government officials slammed these reasons, saying that the airline should have prepared a contingency plan to accommodate and address the needs of their passengers. Numerous passengers complained that they were not informed ahead of the status of their flights, something that is against the provisions set by the Air Passenger Bill of Rights. Walang notice kasi sa akin. When I arrive here, um, hindi ako late sa ano ko, flight ko. The Air Passenger Bill of Rights aims to protect travelers from practices that are perceived to be abusive. The bill classifies the rights of air passengers into three classifications. Rights ng mga pasahero, no? Uh, number one, uh, right of full, fair, and clear uh, disclosure of the terms and conditions of the ticket. The right to ride and be able to take the flight. No? Ang tatlo po, yung pong mga karapatan niya sa mga compensation in case of some delays of the flight, with, in the terminal, in the tarmac. Pag bumili ka pa lang ng ticket, kailangan maliwanag na either in English or Filipino, pinampaliwanag ng sales agent o ng ticket person kung ano yung terms and conditions ng ticket. Under the Air Passenger Bill of Rights, the Department of Trade and Industry is one of the government agencies charged with protecting the rights of travelers. Ang DTI po, ang magre-review on a post-facto, meaning after the pack, nung po mga advertisement ng mga airline companies particularly po yung mga promotions nila. Sasabihin ang promo per piso. Pero actually, pag binagdag mo pa lahat yung other piece, hindi naman siya piso. No? So lahat po yan, binalangkas ng Air Passenger Bill of Rights. At kailangan maliwanag. May breakdown. Although the DTI does not conduct investigations for complaints against airlines and their services, they do accept them if you call them at their hotline numbers. Eh, pwede po sila magreklamo sa DTI call center, 751-3330. So, balit yung pong, yung pong pag-imbestiga ng complaint, ang nang mandate po niya nasa Civil Aeronautics Board. Pero kami naman po ng Civil Aeronautics Board, sa kanan DTI, kami po may network. So, we endorse the complaint and they act on it. With the recent events involving local airlines, how is the government handling these to prevent them in the future? Was the bill overlooked by the airline? And is the Air Passenger Bill of Rights enough to protect travelers from disappointing services of airlines? Good evening. You are watching Legal Help Desk. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. I'm attorney Karen Jimeno. And I'm attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Tonight, we will discuss your legal rights according to the Air Passenger Bill of Rights. What you need to know about the bill and what you need to do to assert your rights should you experience inconveniences on your next flight. Our guest for tonight is attorney Ted Pastrana, an aviation lawyer and partner from the Pastrana Faller Law Office. Good evening and thank you for being with us, attorney Ted. Good evening, Karen. Good evening, Rod. Attorney Ted, good evening. Oh, this is a very timely uh, discussion. Uh, in fact, we had a lot of requests for this <laughs> oh, particular oh. topic. Especially yeah. with the holidays where you had oh. two Air Asia flights. One basically mm. that crashed and another that went off the runway. Yeah, it overshot. Mm -hmm. so yeah, plus also the, uh, the situation in Cebu Pacific. Uh, I mean, we can, we can, mention, we, we can mention that. Uh, there was a lot on, on social media mm -hmm. and we can't ignore uh, those comments. No? So mm -hmm. I think so it's kind of timely. No? So, but uh, I guess we, we start off with uh, basic, basically, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about the Air, air, uh, air Passenger Bill of Rights? Well, the Air Passenger Bill of Rights is a joint uh, memorandum from the Department of Transportation and Communications and uh, the Department of Trade and Industry. All right, uh, these two uh, bodies, of course, regulate. One regulates uh, air transportation and the other one is consumer protection. Mm -hmm. So uh, they came up with this uh, Air Passenger Bill of Rights, which basically defines, the, as the name implies, the rights of a passenger mm -hmm. under certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about um, the other laws that applied 
before in terms of being able to claim your rights. So you have damages. Oh yeah, we still damages. have the, we still have still the civil code. Uh -oh. Yes, and of course, if it involves criminal negligence, then you have the revised penal code. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, in, in summary, what are what are the salient points of the Air Passenger Bill of Rights? Uh, we we got a couple of comments from in social media mm -hmm. that this is really just a declaration of rights, but it doesn't really have any teeth. But first, before we go to that, mm -hmm. uh, what are the salient points? What are the basic rights of a passenger uh, the moment they're, they purchase a ticket? Well, uh, for, first, uh, the passenger has the right to be informed. You have the right to correct information mm -hmm. and the right not to be subjected to misleading advertisements or worse, fraudulent promotions. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes. Uh, Attorney Ted, I'd like to ask, when you say misleading information, mm -hmm. uh, this has happened to several people I know. Mm -hmm. Usually when they see PISO rates mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. uh, very low rates like mm -hmm. 300 pesos going to Hong Kong. And mm -hmm. then when they start clicking on the mga purchase and booking mm -hmm. buttons online, mm -hmm. The total is really, really high, and then that's when you see all the other charges. Mm -hmm. Would you consider that the taxes, fuel mm -hmm. surcharge, would mm -hmm. you consider that as misleading advertisement? Well, uh, this is also contemplated by the APBR, or the Air Passenger Bill of Rights. No? Um, that's why there is a requirement that uh, there should be full disclosure of the terms and conditions of all these promotional fares. No? Um, and, uh, well, uh, Unfortunately, some, I, I think this is more of a case of some passengers not really reading the fine prints. But um, I think the most carriers are responsible enough to really inform the passengers. You know, uh, all of these terms and conditions are in the uh, ticket. You know? mm -hmm. The, the uh, conditions of carriage are there. The conditions of contract are there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also reference to the website of, of the carrier. But unfortunately, you know, nobody really bothers to read the fine prints. But this APBR makes sure that the airline okay, has, the, has that obligation to advise the passengers. Okay? If they see peace of air, uh, the airline is supposed to disclose okay, what, what are the, the what other are the components. Mm -hmm. Because as you said, you know, there are taxes. Uh, fuel surcharge, not anymore. Because the Civil Aeronautics Board has recently lifted the authority mm -hmm. of uh, air carriers to impose fuel surcharge. Yes, charge. I was about to go into that. Mm -hmm. When is that when, effective? Yeah, when is that effective? Well, uh, the, the regulation issued by the Civil Aeronautics Board said that it is immediately effective, but they were able to circulate the uh, resolution of the board, I think uh, only last Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Uh, or, or Thursday, so that's January 8 or 9. But you must remember also that airlines also have the remedy to ask for, to file a motion for reconsideration. Mm. And as you know, uh, orders do not become final until the lapse of 15 days, mm -hmm. okay? So, it, it so we basically, we so, can still expect to see this fuel surcharge mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. tickets when I buying under, I understand. Tickets. I understand some uh, carriers have already taken it off, you know? Mm. And, but there are some carriers which uh, still impose fuel surcharge for the simple reason that uh, the, the right to do so has, has not expired. I mean, were it not for the uh, sudden lifting of the uh, authority to impose fuel surcharge, uh, some carriers, have, I think they have uh, until the end of January, or first week of February, but eventually this will expire too because uh, the CAB only grants three months, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, extend it for another three no, months. So that's uh, good news yeah. for a lot <laughs> of, for of passengers. Yeah. Uh, apart from apart from the right to be fully informed, mm -hmm. I would I would imagine that the, that information is based on what's written in your in your ticket, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever whenever mm -hmm. you get a, an e, an email ticket or. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, but um, apart from the right of being informed, uh, mm -hmm. what are the other key rights of, of passengers that possibly they may not know. Now, for example, in, in case of uh, delayed flights or mm -hmm. their flights are, are, are canceled, uh, mm -hmm. and we all know that that's what happened. Or let's say uh, the, the lost, baggage, lost baggages or the delay was or, due to... Or rerouting. Yeah, rerouting. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you, rerouting you of the aircraft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or, yeah or, or perhaps you know, because uh, the airline would say sometimes it's because of traffic congestion, it's not our mm -hmm. fault. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a summary of of what a passenger can do you specifically. Basi you yeah. basically enumerated all right, yeah. the coverage of the Air Passenger Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. uh, there, is a, there are provisions there pertaining to delay, mm -hmm. all right, cancellation of the flight, uh, delay of the luggage, uh, because mm -hmm. uh, there could be delay of the luggage, delivery of your luggage, even if there's no delay in the flight. Okay? 
and and also you know the usual accident. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So when we we can start to go one by one sure. and uh, just yeah. the key points key to points, remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the flight is delayed, mm -hmm. what can a passenger demand from the airline? Uh -huh. Because napaka notorious yun, especially in the Philippines, where yeah. you're already there waiting to board, and mm -hmm. that's the only time they announce that mm -hmm. uh, that flight is delayed. And Sometimes they don't even did yeah. announce, and you have uh -oh. to proactively go there and say, where is the flight? Shouldn't we be boarding now? So mm -hmm. if that mm -hmm. happens, what can you ask for? So if it's delay, well, we must uh, understand that uh, delay may be caused by a variety of reasons, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's just categorize them into two, okay? One is a uh, delay that is uh, caused by, well, causes beyond the control of the, the, airline. the airline and causes that may be attributable to the carrier itself. Okay, so um, if it is attributable to the carrier, fault of the carrier, um, and there, there is delay, you have to distinguish whether the delay uh, exceeded three hours, okay, but it's less than six hours, or beyond six hours, okay? okay. So if it is just less than three hours, that's, uh, well, apparently considered normal in the industry mm -hmm. because, as you know, it's very, re it's really very hard to keep up with, with the, uh, you yeah. know, exactly. I mean, with there the are thousands schedule. of flights. Exactly. Thousands of flights coming in. You, you know, in it's, it's uh, yeah. so complicated and, you yeah. know, you must consider air traffic congestion, you know, and a lot of factors, okay? So, but if in cases where the delay um, extends from, let's say, three hours to less than six, um, then uh, the, the passenger may ask for the usual amenities all right, um, like, like be, be provided with at least food, mm -hmm. you know, for or, free. or refreshment for free, okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the APBR is very specific, at least water and, and, uh, and sandwiches, mm -hmm. all right? And, uh, so this is between three hours, a delay of three hours and six and hours. And less than six hours. Yeah, less than six mm -hmm. hours. But there's also the right to be uh, accommodated in a hotel, yeah. all right? I guess it depends what time Exactly, exactly. Oh. And, and, and to be allowed to make some calls, or if the passenger needs uh, uh, what you call this medical assistance, then some first aid would have to be given as well. Mm -hmm. okay. And beyond six hours, can you already demand uh, what can you that do? you be Sorry. rebooked? Uh, as a matter of fact, if, if, uh, even if it is less than six hours, you also have the option to, to uh, ask for a rebooking or even a refund or be endorsed to another carrier, which probably has a flight close to the schedule of your flight. Yeah. Now, you mentioned okay. refund. I think a mm -hmm. lot of people, that's what they're trying to, to get, no? mm -hmm. both a refund and perhaps monetary damages. Uh -huh. yung normally, na I have to be compensated for mm -hmm. my, all, the, all the correspondence we're getting. Is I want I have to be compensated for the inconvenience. I missed Christmas with my family. I went all you know, mangan type. Well, oh, the, so, re, the mm. refund portion is covered by uh, the APBR. Mm. Okay, but if you want to ask for uh, additional compensation, you know, such as uh, what what you mentioned, mm. or probably you miss oh, a business you, opportunity. Exactly, I was gonna say yeah. if you missed an uh, important missed meeting. meeting. Yeah. Right, Can right. You or you got a contract cancelled because you failed to show up in your point of destination. Then, uh, but that is also actionable. But you'll have to go through the, the civil, courts. the courts, yes, uh -huh. because it's going to be a civil action for damages. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, uh, yes. I, we only touched, I think, we, the, the surface the because that's only delay for uh -huh. flights. But we still have cancellations, right. or right. if you miss your connecting flight or uh -huh. lost baggages. So we still have a lot to, to discuss. Yeah. Legal help desk will return after these messages. We're still watching Legal Help Desk with our guest, Attorney Ted Pastrana. Right, uh, Attorney Ted, we were we were discussing uh, earlier, uh, right before the break, no, yung mga uh, delays, the delays, flights. delays of flights, and uh, what are the remedies of, of the passengers. No? Yes. Um, now let's talk about canceled flights. Mm -hmm. you know? um, totally canceled, siya and di na natuloy. Or when, when do you consider a delayed flight a canceled flight? Oh, okay. Maybe we should start when, with that question. When the delay is more than six hours, um, you can consider it as a flight which is deemed canceled. Deemed canceled. Deemed yeah. canceled. Okay. And in that case, what can you do? In which case, uh, all the uh, amenities and the remedies available for a passenger for canceled flights okay, will we'll, we'll we'll also be. Yeah, we'll okay, also what, what, are, what are the 
the rights? Well, it's basic rights? well, pretty much the same. All right, uh, you have the rights to the amenities. You know, you have to you can be uh, you have to be billeted you have to be billeted in a hotel uh, whenever necessary. With food. With food, as, of course. As well, paid, food, uh -huh, paid expenses uh -huh. for the food. And uh, the right to ask for a rebooking or refund or be endorsed to. To another another carrier. When you say endorse to another airline carrier, mm -hmm. does that mean that you do not have to pay for any additional ticket? It's Shouldn't the responsibility be. of the airline to buy yes. the ticket for you yes, in another flight be. that will get you to your destination. Should, yes, that's right. But, but but again, Karen, you must understand that the cost of cancellation also may either be something which is beyond the control of the airline or. Uh, Within the control of the carrier. No, it's one. It's so, one thing to get, you know, to have the right to mm -hmm, refund, mm -hmm, no. Mm -hmm. And I've experienced this. I think a lot of people have experienced this. Uh, but how about the expediency of getting the refund? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you pay online via mm -hmm. their website, mm -hmm. and then when you when you call, it's a little bit of a hassle, and, mm -hmm. and you have to go there, and then it will take months, no. I, personally, I've I, I've gone through it, and you know, I, I didn't. I don't think. I think I gave up, no. <laughs> because it was just mm -hmm. so tedious, I kept That's on That's a good strategy and, on their part, no? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Until is, you give what, up. Is, what are your rights for an expedient refund? Uh, well, I don't think it is by design, okay? Uh, sometimes you just have to follow a certain procedure for, for refund. And, and I must agree with you, it could be tedious certain times, no? Uh, but precisely you have the APBR, you know, it has the Civil Aeronautics Board to set up a complaints desk and even the carriers themselves to set up their own complaints desk at the airport, at mm -hmm. the airport. So ideally... So both the airlines and the CAB have... Correct, have, correct. Uh, so ideally, ideally the uh, passengers' complaints should be addressed right there at the mm -hmm. airport. But uh, is there no deadline or period mm -hmm. yeah. given for mm -hmm. an airline to give a refund within a specific mm -hmm. well, period? Well, um, I, I think it should be within reasonable time. Okay, There's, there's no specific this, time. I, I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure if there's a specific time within which uh, the refund should be. But it, it, it says there that uh, the passenger's complaint should be addressed expeditiously. That's expeditiously. Why, that's be. why there is a requirement to put up a help desk. Attorney Ted, since mm -hmm. we're on the topic of refund, mm -hmm. one of the personal experiences I had was that I was traveling with my husband and he bought the online internet mm -hmm. ticket. Yeah. No, uh, no, online oh. as in um, you get uh, web uh, service, uh -huh. meaning... Oh, um, check-in. Uh, web check-in? No, free no? Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi. So, oh. It's not free, but it's paid In, pala. Uh, so oh. it's Wi-Fi. So Wi we paid, yeah. he paid for the whole duration of the flight, the mm -hmm. Wi-Fi services. Mm -hmm. But then, as soon as he was already logging and he already paid for it through his credit card, mm -hmm. the server suddenly went down. So we called the stewardess mm -hmm. and then she said that they had problems with the server mm -hmm. so basically there was no wi-fi during the flight mm -hmm. but then when we talked to one of their attendants as well they were saying that they cannot issue a refund because mm -hmm. the unit that processes the payments is different from the unit that of course them that they're, mm -hmm. they're the ones providing the wi-fi mm -hmm. what remedies would you have in that case wherein you have an airline and i'm sure the, the attendant was saying we were not the first passengers to have this type of problem. So okay. basically, they've had several passengers before uh -huh. pay for the Wi-Fi and not get anything in return and without any refunds. Really? So in that case... You mean there, in that instance, you ask for a refund? Yes, no because refund basically, given. we already paid mm -hmm. and there was no Wi-Fi We're just, we're just talking about the refund for that particular service, which yes. is the Wi-Fi service. Yes. Um, it's all really possible that they may have no uh, facility for a refund right that very moment, okay? But uh, some airlines, they have what you call service recovery voucher. Um, in fact, let's say uh, you have a small TV in front of you and you, you realize it's not working. Well, uh, you ask if the flight attendant, you can be reseated, transferred to another seat, or if there are no other seats available, you can get a service recovery voucher. Mm -hmm. You know, some, some airlines do have that. I mean, so at, you least, can the, demand at this. least the airlines that I represent, they have that yeah. kind of yeah. having So that I'm not going to mention the airline anymore, <laughs> yes. but for those of you out there who have undergone the same experience, uh, you can demand some yeah. form of refund or compensation, compensation. And, or yeah. And I guess, uh, to, just to voucher. draw a point, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, when you say complaint, mm. it has to be. It can't be just you're shouting and pulling your hair there. That's not mm -hmm. considered a formal complaint. You have to 
you have to fill up a form that's and, right that's right for it to be right. processed you can't just verbally well uh, in in, uh, uh, in the case brought up by by karen you know there's a facility for some carriers yeah. you know but unfortunately some carriers you know yeah, they, it's they just it's it. just for passenger service, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we have some questions from our viewers, uh, Ted, no? uh, starting with Regina. Uh, my friends, according to Regina, my friends and I were going to fly back to Manila from Boracay uh, due to airport congestion at the Katiklan Airport. Now, the airline turned us away and brought us to Calibo Airport instead. We waited a, a total of six hours before they finally allowed us to board the plane. Halfway through the flight, the pilot announced that we were uh, to land at another terminal. Are we entitled to be compensated by the airline for the numerous inconveniences we experience with them? If so, what? So. Well, I think we, we have discussed that. No? Um, if they mean uh, any other compensation outside the Air Passenger Bill of Rights, then uh, and they suffer damages, something which they can really be proven and something that could be quantified, mm -hmm. then of course they have the remedy to go to go to court. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is an administrative remedy, okay? Uh, and right there at the airport when they were not uh, accommodated within six hours, I think uh, we discussed it a while ago that um, uh, they should be provided uh, the basic amenities mm -hmm. and uh, if there were available flights, mm -hmm. uh, then they should be endorsed to mm -hmm. uh, the, that available flight. Or um, if, if uh, let's say, what do you call this? Uh, of course, if they don't want to travel anymore because, uh, because they have, uh, I mean, they would totally miss the, the, their appointments and they would rather have the flight uh, rescheduled, then they have the right to rebook the flight also. Yeah. In this case, they landed in the wrong yeah, airport than the one they booked. You know, so some, I think in that case, they can already demand for I wonder, damages. I really wonder what, what kind of, uh, uh, I mean, where exactly they were sent to. Because we only have, what, four terminals in the, mm -hmm. in the NAIA. Yeah. Let's, let's say we, they were just placed in another terminal. That's, if it's just uh, another terminal, sometimes, you know, it's a limitation of our, of our airport mm -hmm. also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know. Okay. Well, we have another question from Alex. I was scheduled to fly to Boracay at 9 in the morning, and I went to Boracay. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend and I were at the airport at 7 o'clock, but when we went to the check-in counter, the attendant told us that our flight was canceled. I checked my phone and email, and I did not receive any notifications from the airline. They didn't give a reason for the cancellation of our flight. They did not give us the option to book the next available flight from another airline. They made us wait for hours for the next available flight. How can I go about filing a complaint against this airline as a clear violation of my rights as a passenger? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the question is how does she go about mm -mm. filing the complaint? Yeah. Well, uh, they can go to the Civil Aeronautics Board because the Civil Aeronautics Board is the body that regulates carriers. Where right? is that? In um, one you mentioned there, they have a help desk in the airport in the, in itself. In the airport, yes. Mm -hmm. But the CAB itself, they have their office uh, near Terminal 2. Your terminal too. So, in, so you in, can, and, and they entertain uh, complaints via email, you know, so you don't really have to be physically present, at least uh, while you lodge your So you go to the website and. Uh, yes, website yes. And then, and then uh, you can go to, I think, www.cab.gov.pa. Realistically, though, do they, do they really reply? Yes, they do, they yeah. do. Uh, they, there's a legal officer there, and mm -hmm. uh, I can assure you that the CAB people are very active and proactive mm -hmm. in terms proactive, to yeah. addressing, when it comes to addressing passenger complaints. Mm -hmm. All right. Now from Amalu. Uh, on a trip to Cambodia with my parents, the airline we took lost our luggage. We had to call our, fami our family in Manila to no notify the local office of the airline. For the entire week, my sister had to call the airline to ask for updates. Until finally, they found our bags in Beijing, China. The check-in attendant put the, the wrong tag to our bags. Can we ask the airline to give us monetary compensation mm -hmm. for the additional expenses we incurred on top of the compensation the they had obligated that to give us. We, we had to buy clothes, uh, had to buy slippers, and my parents' medicines while we were in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. right. Well, this is uh, governed by an altogether different convention. Or, uh, this is governed by the Warsaw Convention mm -hmm. because I think this is international travel. Yeah, they, they and, flew out. Um, mm -hmm. They flew out and, and, uh, and their luggage were rerouted, uh, were routed to a different destination. To the wrong destination. <laughs> wrong destination. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it, that, it's not covered by the Air Passenger Bill of Rights? Yes, because uh, the APBR, by the way, when it comes to foreign air carriers, is only applicable to outbound flights, not, not to inbound But in this flights. case, they, they did go outbound uh -huh. and then they, the luggage... 
mm-hmm. went missing in, mm-hmm. in Cambodia. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. is that still covered by the Air Passenger Bill of Rights? When it comes to uh, delayed luggage or, or lost luggage or luggage that are offloaded, no? Um, there is a provision in the Air Passenger Bill of Rights, but when it comes to offloading, for example, uh, it must be due to uh, operational safety or security reasons. No? Yeah. But uh, other than that, then you, you apply the, the Warsaw Convention, no? mm-hmm. the Warsaw Convention. In which case, um, in the Warsaw Convention, there's provision pertaining to loss, Lost loss luggage. of the luggage. In which case, you calculate the uh, weight, you know, mm-hmm. multiplied by something like twenty dollars, I think. Yeah. Per kilo, per kilo. But in terms of loss, admittedly, there's really no way to... to I mean, in terms of uh, delay, rather, delay. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to, to... You have to prove really the extent of your damage. So again, it's, it's with mm-hmm. the courts. Mm-hmm. This yes, it's with, to, with the, courts, the courts. Yes. Is this something that you can also bring up with the Civil Aeronautics Board here in the Philippines, especially if it's, a, it's an airline that operates here mm-hmm. or it's an airline that is owned by a company here in the Philippines. Yes, yes, definitely you can file a complaint at the CAB and they will entertain that. Um, mostly it's con- conciliation, mediation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, we must uh, understand that uh, the CAB is not really a regular court, okay, that uh, can uh, adjudicate, adjudicate claims. Okay? Does it have quasi-judicial function? It has, it has. Mm-hmm. Okay? It has. And also the CAB can impose uh, at least penalties on the airline on itself, the airline, right? On on the airline. Airline. I'm emphasizing that because uh, Courts can take so long, so I sometimes if your luggage uh-huh. is only $100, $200, then it might not justify having to go to courts. Yeah. But you, uh, you may have to go to the small claims court. Where yeah. the, the uh, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting <laughs> angle. Right? We'd yeah. like to discuss that, the yeah. uh, option of going to the small claims court. Yes. No? Uh, we yeah. can discuss that after this break. Mm, yes. So stay tuned. Legal Help Desk will return after these reminders. We're still tuned in to Legal Help Desk with our guest, Attorney Ted Pastrana. Right, we're still uh, tackling the Air Passenger Bill of Rights. So, Ted, right before the break, um, we were discussing, well, you mentioned that uh, mm-hmm. passengers can actually go to the small claims court. No, this is quite interesting. Like I said, of course, uh, uh-huh. a lot of people, they want an immediate uh, resolution. No? Uh, mm-hmm. And sometimes, have, sure, they can go to the CAB and mm-hmm. the CAB can... Uh, can impose penalties on the airline, but it, it doesn't solve their problem of mm-hmm. being compensated and, and mm-hmm. being, you know, uh, I guess rewarded for for the hassle that they that they've gone through. So, talk to us about the yung, the option of going to the small claims court. Well, if they wish to pursue a civil action and uh, the amount that mm-hmm. they are asking for does not exceed one hundred thousand pesos, then the one option is to go to the small claims mm-hmm. court. Mm-hmm. Um, and and this, of course, as you know, the small claims court does not only pertain to you know claims against airlines. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's a general it's remedy. It's anything below where, below a particular uh, amount, right? Correct. correct. And, and, and uh, of yeah. course, as long as it's not certain types of criminal offenses. No? Mm-hmm. No, but right. uh, hundred thousand, I think, no? hundred thousand. For, 000, for yeah. the benefit of our viewers, mm-hmm. you can go to the small claims court without a lawyer. So that's one of the benefits as well. We're in. Mm-hmm. You don't have to spend extra in order to claim. Whatever damages that you experience, whether it's financial or even moral damages, yeah. lalo na kung abusive yung yung paghandle ng airline staff, for instance, uh, when you complain or when you are experiencing any inconvenience during your travel. Mm-hmm. And now let's talk about we talked about delayed uh, luggage and mm-hmm. uh, missing luggages. How about damaged luggages? You know, yung, mm-hmm. yung the, the things that you have inside and mm-hmm. the damage. Ano yung mga Oftentimes, you have, you have to calculate what is the extent of the damage. No? Mm-hmm. Um, of course, if you have proof, uh, then, then you just present the, your proof of damage to the airline. And uh, the airline will review your claim and uh, see whether it's, uh, it should be compensated. Or, I'd like or to not. talk about mm-hmm. uh, issues relating to luggage mm-hmm. and property. Uh, because there are some airlines where if you read the fine print, mm-hmm. they ask you to declare right. uh, any valuables in mm-hmm. the luggages. And then they have a disclaimer saying that if you do not declare them, mm-hmm. then they are free from any liability should mm-hmm. there be any loss 
or mm -hmm. damage to your luggage or the mm -hmm. belongings inside the luggage. Mm -hmm. So is that a valid stipulation? Oh, yes, it is a valid stipulation uh, because you must understand also that uh, the airlines, they process uh, hundreds of now thousands of, of uh, luggages uh, every flight. Okay, so uh, it's but fair to require the passengers to declare uh, so that if there is anything valuable inside their luggage, they can be apprised, uh, they apprise the airline and they can be advised that they either hand carry the valuables or uh, secure insurance. Because for any it. passenger can claim of I course. Had something the, the, there. The flip side mm -hmm. of that is you yeah. know, passengers claiming that mm -hmm. they have a Rolex inside yes. and it's mm -hmm. missing, right. they have okay. expensive jewelry. So, yeah. but, but for any other uh, fine print that mm -hmm. says that the airline should be free from any liability for any loss, is that also valid? N well, not, not to totally mm -hmm. exempt the airline from any liability because uh, even in the Warsaw Convention, you know, the Warsaw Convention recognizes that airlines may have uh, some certain liabilities. Mm -hmm. And as, as I've said, you know, you calculate that by just multiplying uh, the weight of your luggage mm -hmm. uh, by 20 US dollars approximately. And uh, I will say if you're carrying a 20 kilo, kilo luggage, then that would be approximately 40 kilos in case of loss. Mm -hmm. In case of damage, then uh, we have to, you have to show proof to the extent of your, your damage, you know, which definitely could not extend could not exceed 400 US dollars in the example that we, we were talking about a while ago. Yeah. Okay, I have another question and uh, this relates to, for instance, if you're using two airlines in mm -hmm. while traveling and the delay was caused by one airline which mm -hmm. caused you to miss other your airline. other yeah. flight. So, mm -hmm. if, for instance, you're connecting in another country mm -hmm. but then your delay with another airline uh, mm -hmm. caused you to miss the other flight. Mm -hmm. Can you demand the payment for uh, another ticket mm. or rebooking from the airline that caused the delay? Okay, um, it did be treated as uh, one successive carriage unless of course that you have a very long layover in one, in one country. Um, and you have to determine which one really is the pr principal or primary carrier depending on, usually that's measured by the leg, by the duration, by the duration of your flight. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, if you, know, if you just uh, have a, let's say, a short uh, domestic segment and then you have an international segment, then you have to make your claim, uh, mm -hmm. file your claim against the principal carrier. Okay, but right. at yes. least you can claim. You can, you definitely okay. can. All right, we still have some questions from our viewers. Uh, Rambi is asking, more than two months ago, this airline canceled my flight from Clark to Hong Kong and back. I asked for a refund for the canceled flight, but until now, they still haven't given it to me. They have already approved my request for cash refund and said I would receive it in 7 to 14 working days. I called and emailed them several times to no avail. Can I file a case against them? What legal action can I do under the Air Passenger Bill of Rights? Okay. Well, I think uh, she knows uh, the, the, this uh, uh, caller, letter said there, call, yeah. caller, okay, yeah. uh, knows uh, the remedy, and uh, that is to claim for a refund. Yeah. And I think uh, the refund was already approved. approved. It's yeah. just a matter, it's just a matter of, of collecting. <laughs> collecting and this it. goes uh. into what you said earlier that they are required to expeditiously uh -huh, address uh -huh, complaints, uh -huh. but in this case, so I, I think, think he's going to wait for months <laughs> for a refund. I, I, I think, yeah, they can bring it up to, well, first the Civil Aeronautics Board, and if or it doesn't things. work, small, small, uh, small, small things. Small things. Small things. Approved he can, correct, she can correct. There's Maybe it's just a matter, you know, there was just probably some delay in the mm -hmm. processing. I really don't know. We can only speculate. Right, yeah. right, right. But yeah. Siguro on a practical basis, before mm -hmm. he goes to the small claims court, mm -hmm. go to the Civil Aeronautics Board first. Or go, or go to the airline and, and find out. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it may be sitting somewhere there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But more than anything, it's really the hassle, you know. I think a lot of people are right. hassled by... Oh, uh, because delays, in this case, uh, oh, ngay siya na ngayon na cancel yeah. na ng flight uh, to uh, Hong Kong, and uh, then siya pa yung nang ulit to na convenience siya pa nag-follow up na ano. You, I think yeah. uh, that's why people are irked. Yeah. Uh, yes. no? uh, more we have else. another question from Louis. Our flight to Cebu from Clark was delayed for five hours. The airline's staff didn't give us any refreshments as stated in the Air Passenger Bill of Rights until we cited the bill to them. Are all airline staff trained to know the bill? And what actions should they do according to the bill? Well, uh, that's hard to answer, mm -hmm. okay? Because uh, he's asking whether the, uh, the staff are all trained. They should be, they yeah. should be. I mean, you know, uh, basic passenger service. 
Well, at least the carriers that I represent, I can assure you that they, the staffs are well trained and they, they address the, yeah. com the, the, the concerns of the passengers. So that, the question there is yes, they should be. They should be. But, uh, in they case should they, be. They were, uh, yes. And in this case, they were not given refreshments when, in fact, we were speaking earlier now, mm -hmm. a delay of three hours, three hours or, more, or more, they are already entitled to free food, mm -hmm. refreshments, mm -hmm. amenities, mm -hmm. or even hotel mm -hmm. amenities kung gabi yung flight. Yeah. Uh, would you advise viewers or passengers to keep receipts of mm -hmm. their own expenses should they file a complaint so that they can get reimbursement? Well, um, that would help because uh, any damage you claim to have suffered, you have to substantiate you have that. To substantiate. You have to prove that. Would that. Be proof, no? All yeah, right. Yeah. Now, very quickly, I, I, uh, we're told that uh, I have to ask you the last question, but very quickly because we haven't been able to cover the worst case scenario, which is injury and even, of course, mm -hmm. death. No? Yeah, uh, which reminds crashes. me again of yeah, the Air Asia, the Air Asia flight, flight oh. just mm -hmm. last December. immediate... Uh, of course, we, we saw how mm -hmm. Air Asia reacted. Their, their CEO was very proactive and mm -hmm. they've already announced $100,000 uh, compensation. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that a standard? Or uh, in other words, if you are a victim or your family, mm -hmm. uh, family member is a victim mm -hmm. of that what what the the relatives and friends what what can what uh, remedy can they avail of very uh, quickly uh, well uh, very quickly but it's a very complicated <laughs> yeah, thing what, because it's an uh, an accident okay yeah. it's an accident and uh, they do have remedies of course they do have remedies available to them and uh, well thankfully most carriers uh, when uh, disasters like that happen they're really really equipped to to handle and they're usually covered by insurance and then uh, yeah you're pretty much uh, covered by insurance also mm -hmm. um, it's hard to give a specific uh, number but if you read the APBR for example uh, there's an example there uh, affecting uh, flights that uh, have either destined to or emanating from the United States uh, where the figure cited is seventy five thousand US dollars, but that's not. That's for death. Or uh, injury? Yes, it death, bodily, injury. bodily, usually death or bodily injury. Mm. But uh, uh, that's very specific to to cases like that. So going to look quickly, mm. what's the first thing they do? Do, do they file a claim form that the airline will give them? There or are they, there are forms. There are forms. Oh. You know, even for missing luggage, there are forms there to be filled up. Okay. I mean, what what more for you know a, a missing relative, for mm. example. Mm. All right. All right. All right. We have uh, our last question, and this one's from Alfred. I was on board a plane bound for Cebu when they pay off, uh, uh, boarded me and uh, six more passengers and transferred us to a later flight that was delayed for three hours. I bought my ticket at the regular price five months before uh, the trip, so I didn't understand why I was one of the passengers off-boarded. So there's a uh, case of uh, being off-boarded. No? The airline did not give me the option to auction my seat off or anything. Is this a definite case of the airline overbooking this particular flight? What does the bill say about overbooking and, I guess, being off offloaded? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, overbooking is a uh, recognized practice the in practice, the industry. Yeah. And it is allowed because uh, you need the airlines also. You have to give them some leeways for no shows, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't want the aircraft flying uh, empty. Uh -huh. And so uh, the ballpark figure is about 10% overbooking, but that's no longer being observed. Uh, we have a term that, that uh, says uh, responsible overbooking. Mm. Okay? When the flight is overbooked, then it is the obligation of the carriers to look for volunteers you yeah. know, from among the other passengers who would be willing to give up their seat uh, so that the others could be accommodated. Right. And uh, there's comp for those who will volunteer, they should be properly compensated. So in right. this case, he did but not unfortunately, even volunteer. Unfortunately, there's no volunteer apparently, and they have to uh, offload some, some passengers. And in that case, of course, they will be entitled to compensation. So he yeah. can claim compensation. Definitely. Yeah. Ako before, I told you that my ticket, when I got my uh, boarding pass, mm -hmm. the seat did not exist. It was 30-something, uh, and <laughs> it was, it was not there. No. No. It, it ended at 20. I said, I feel like it is a... A way of uh, offboarding, we that, are bumping me off. Is that a local carrier? It's a local it's carrier. It's a local carrier. So, parang it's a subtle way of bumping me off, no? <laughs> Meron kang boarding pass, kunwari, but the seat does not exist. My seat's a wing, so. <laughs> I, I have an experience in the U.S. Okay, it, if seat number 26A, then there were two of us holding the 26A. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so raffle ba? <laughs> <laughs> so, right. thank you, Attorney Ted. I hope that to our viewers out there, the information that we provided today will help you not only with your past problems, but with your future travel. Uh, once again, Attorney Ted Pastrana, partner at the Pastrana Falar Law Office. Legal help desk will return, so stay tuned.
Welcome back to Legal Help Desk. All right, that was a fantastic discussion. I wish we had three yes, hours. And it's think, very uh, timely because, oh. again, all those who were probably victimized during yeah. the holiday season sa travel sila, yeah. and those who will be traveling not only for the papal visit, but also the coming summer right. and uh, all, vacations. All of us had friends we, uh, or relatives whom we knew got affected by it, mm -hmm. by the and chaos. Even us, and no? even us, I, I got yeah. delayed. Um, and, uh, you know, I, and I think... I think that, that, that the, the key here is for, for a lot of people, they immediately think, all right, I should be able to get damages and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's, uh, now that we've uh, discussed the Air Passenger Bill of Rights, uh, there are specific remedies lang talaga, you mm -hmm. know, that you can get, especially for delayed. And yeah. uh, perhaps, Karen, you'd like to oh, wrap up so some of that. So for some key summarize, points uh, here, uh, key one points. of the common problems you always experience are delayed flights. Mm -hmm. So for delayed flights, yeah. if the delay is over, three hours then you can demand as a matter of right uh, amenities meaning free food Snack. free refreshments and if it's an evening flight you can even demand for free hotel accommodations mm -hmm. and you can also demand right away as soon as maga delay pa lang, you can ask for rebooking or for you to be endorsed to another airline, meaning mm -mm. that the airline will pay for your other ticket in another airline to get you to your destination on time. And if you experience other damages, for instance, you missed an important meeting, you missed a contract because of this, or a family uh, reunion, for instance, those th types of damages can be claimed, but those are damages that you have to claim by filing a complaint uh, in a court. But uh, if they are below 100,000 pesos, then, or do not exceed 100,000 pesos, it is advisable that you go to a small claims court so that you don't have to file uh, with a lawyer, meaning you don't have to incur legal fees, and also it's going to be faster. Yeah, okay. So, um, again, just to summarize, no, uh, I think a lot of us uh, have a tendency to become very impatient when it comes to uh, delays or cancellation of flights. And, uh, and rightly so. No? We shouldn't be sitting around and kind of relaxing on, on this. We have to demand our rights. However, uh, there's only uh, certain, a certain amount that our, our law can provide. No? And the reason for this is that we can't have every claim that uh, a person uh, will file uh, be taken care of by, by the airline right away. In other words, just because you complain doesn't mean that the airline will immediately give you a refund. It doesn't work that way. No? Uh, because if that happens, there are abuses. No? Uh, a lot of passengers or who claim their passengers can just claim, oh, I lost uh, a Rolex uh, in, in my luggage, you know, or, or perhaps I, 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 uh, I got delayed, I missed uh, a, a 1 million peso contract, so therefore you have to pay me 1 million pesos. So it, it, we have to kind of balance it out. We can't have a situation wherein you have immediate remedy and that uh, you can have uh, moral damages right away. No? So uh, as mentioned by, by, by Karen, there are specific uh, provisions and things that you can demand. No? You know, after three hours, you, you, you snack. Again, don't, you don't have to demand a full course meal. No? Okay. And at the same time, a hotel, it would be a reasonable hotel and not a five-star hotel and necessarily. Then, uh, on that note, uh, for lost baggages, mm -hmm. uh, it is also advisable for you to follow the fine print. I mean, that's why you have mm -hmm. to read the terms and conditions of your tickets so that if you have valuables, for instance, an expensive watch or uh, medicines, for instance, that are very important, then it is advisable that you declare that you have valuables so that the airline can advise you whether you should hand carry them or that there should be additional insurance or security. Mm -hmm. And in terms of remedies, one of the practical routes that you can take is to go to the help desk of the Civil Aeronautics wow. Board. They are available in the airports and uh, that would save you at least the hassle of having to file a claim in court and if that does not work then you can also go to the small claims court or file a case in courts mm. and incidentally the air passenger bill of rights only applies to local carriers for foreign carriers uh, it only applies to the outbound, the outbound flight you know? uh, but and only specific cases uh, because uh, basically um, Foreign carriers are covered by the Warsaw Convention, so not the Air Passenger Bill of Rights. So please do take note of that. All right, so over the week, we have received some questions from viewers on topics we have previously discussed. Our first recap question is from Meloy. I was a victim of ATM skimming. The bank uh, made me issue a waiver, waiving my rights to file a claim in court before they can pay me back with the stolen amount as part of their goodwill. 
is this a correct procedure? Would it have been better if I filed a small claims case instead? Okay. All right. Well, uh, mm. first of all, if you lost money through ATM skimming, you still had a right to claim the amount mm. of your deposit from the bank. So whatever mm. amount you uh, deposited there, for instance, mm. let's say you have 500,000 pesos in deposit at that bank, then you have a right to claim that full amount even if you're a victim of ATM skimming because it is the responsibility of the bank to make sure that when you withdraw the money that you deposited, it is that same amount that you deposited with them. Now, th when you say that uh, they are asking you to file or um, sign a waiver form, then that is really more contractual, meaning it does not affect your right to file a claim for the amount that you lost from ATM skimming. Uh, but uh, if you sign that waiver, it is basically an agreement between you and the bank, so it's more of a um, contractual agreement that they will settle your claim without you having yeah, to file yeah. a case, but in exchange that you basically agreed also uh, to sign that waiver. Mm. I think what's so. important is if the bank is willing to cover what you lost anyway, uh, then there, then you might as well just agree to that waiver. No? Mm -hmm. It'll be be easier because the reality of it, yes, you can file a, uh, uh, you can decide to file a claim uh, in court, but. Uh, you know, the delays you're going to have uh, we might not be worth it. So uh, you have to balance it also on the, on the practical, practical side, not yes. just the legal side of it. And uh, small claims, by the way, uh, it should not exceed 100,000 pesos. So right. if, you're, if the amount you're claiming does not exceed 100,000 pesos, then it's also an option for you to go to the small claims court. Right. Our next recap question is from Scotty. I filed a case under the small claims court, but the decision rendered by the court was partial with the reason that no substantial evidence was presented. The hearing was held in one day and was sent for resolution on the same day. Can I file a motion for reconsideration on the decision of the court? Can I still present the evidence to substantiate my complaint? Okay, so in this case, um, it's a small claims court, it is really mandated to be faster. So usually it can get resolved in a day, but it does not also preclude you from going through the regular routes of appealing or filing a motion for reconsideration if there is one um, an error in the judgment or you have uh, evidence that will substantiate mm -hmm. your claim but of course it depends dun sa yeah. Yeah, percent mo. Uh, you might have to file another uh, uh, a pleading right. uh, yeah. MR. and that's that's the thing it's in this case you were already given uh, an, uh, you were awarded already a partial you know, compensation. Uh, so you kind of have to weigh it uh, because if you file a motion for reconsideration, maybe an appeal, it might eventually be even more, your expenses might even be more. No? The whole point of small claims court is that you don't have to spend too much on lawyers and lawyer fees so that you can get an immediate uh, compensation for whatever issue that you, legal issue that you filed. No? But if the moment you start appealing, then it, you, you might you might lose your shirt, no? Uh, so you have to, again, you have to weigh the practicality of it. You, you, yes, you have the right to, to bring it up, but it might not be worth it so, because it's a small claim. No? All right? So our last uh, recap question is from Randy. I, I went to a small claims court and was told that there's a filing fee of about 2,000 pesos. I was told, too, that if the opposing party did not appear or if the summons was not delivered, the complaint would become void. Is this true? If yes, then what, would ben uh, what benefit would I get from filing a small claims case? Mm -hmm. It's true that there are, mm. there's it's still a, a fee. filing fee, mm. but uh, it is small relative to filing mm. fees with the regular courts. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not true that your complaint will be void if uh, they there's cannot some. serve the summons on the respondent. Mm -hmm. uh, what's gonna happen is that they cannot proceed to hear the case if the summons is not served because they have to attain jurisdiction oh, over yeah. the respondent, respondent as well yeah. so that he can be forced to appear in court. But uh, what's going to happen basically is that uh, they, they will, the, the court will try to serve the summons on the respondent mm. um, until they are successful so mm. that the case can proceed. Yeah, the best is to look for really the address, the address of, of that, uh, of that mm -hmm. person. Maybe they they can they can they, they can send the, the summons based on uh, through registered mail, you know. So there there are several ways to to uh, 
to do that. So I think you can do your homework and try to find out where the person of the, uh, where the respondent is or where the, where he lives, so that uh, you can assist in trying to uh, serve the summons to him. All right. Uh, that is all the time that we have for tonight. We would like to thank our viewers who uh, keep on sending uh, your legal questions via social media. I'm Attorney Rod Depomoseno. And I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. If you have any questions about our topic for tonight, you may post these on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights. Good night.